Hi everyone, and welcome to another Marvelous video. Today, we'll be looking at one of the most complex characters from the world of comics, Deathlock. Although Rich Buckler created the first Deathlock, several iterations of the character have been introduced by different writers and artists throughout the years. The character paved the way for several comic franchises that used it to illustrate human-cyborg hybrid characters. Deathlock's illustrations have an uncanny resemblance to Robocop, while its time-traveling aspects had great contributions to the Terminator franchise. The 893 third installment of Comic Book Legends Revealed explained how Robocop's creator Edward Neumeyer had a comic series that became the building ground for Deathlock's story. It was a time when Marvel stepped in to make a Robocop comic series backing up the 1987 film, and one of the pitches that was never incorporated into it became the basis for Deathlock. With the new upcoming Robocop Rogue City video game, it would be a great time to explore the branches of this character. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Wait! How do you know which is which? Doesn't matter. Who is Deathlock? As mentioned earlier, there were several different characters throughout several comics who became Deathlock. The first one being Luther Manning. Created by Dog Mensch and Rich Buckler, Luther Manning was from the alternate reality of Earth 7484, showcased in Astonishing Tales, issue 26. The story begins in the 1970s when he was a colonel in the army. Later in 1985, while attending war games, Luther was critically injured owing to a mine explosion. Following the incident, Luther's remains were used in a covert operation to create cyborg super soldiers known as Project Alpha Mech. It was headed by Luthor's superior officer, Major Simon Riker and his brother Harlan Riker, who used Manning's brain, his nervous system, and still living tissues, which were transplanted into a synthetic body with artificial tissues and limbs. These were lost in the altercation with Dr. Doom. Staying in stasis for five years, Luthor emerged as a human cyborg hybrid and took the name Deathlock owing to his death like state. Although Simon and his machinery carefully monitored Luthor's training and early missions, Deathlock eventually rebelled against his programming when his memories returned. After escaping Riker's control, Deathlock learned that he was actually dead, and his wife had since married his old friend Mike Travers. All these issues made Luther go crazy, and the worst part was he could not even commit suicide. Since then, he had one purpose, and that was to ruin his former master. Meanwhile, Harlan Riker converted himself into a cyborg as well, and devoted himself to merging himself with the Omnicomputer overseeing the entire city of New York. However, Deathlock forced him out of the Omnicomputer while the CIA began restoring Deathlock to life by transferring his mind to a clone of Luthor. They succeeded not only in reanimating him, but also in keeping his memories intact. Deathlock's stories of time traveling began in issue 36 of the same comic series. At some point, he was captured by Marvin Flum, aka Mentallo, who managed to override his computer systems. His intention was to control him and use him to kill the President of the United States. Fortunately, he was able to resist the external commands given to him by Mentallo, giving enough time for the Fantastic Four to arrive and foil Mentallo. Talos plans. Deathlock was then taken into S.H.I.E.L.D. custody, however, in Captain America issues 286 to 288, he was stolen from the facility by Roxxon Energy for Harlan Riker to study and experiment. Harlan eventually ended up creating his own Deathlock prototype, which was a complete robotic version of Deathlock. Luther was also reprogrammed to serve Roxxon and their Nth Command Division. Interestingly, the robotic clone went back in time to save the reprogrammed Luther Manning, only to be killed by him. Fortunately, the clone managed to restore his memory, setting him free from Roxxon's control. Thanks to Captain America, Deathlock managed to return to his own time, following which he defeated Harlan Riker and his plans of replacing humanity with cyborg warriors. Deathlock's next appearance was in Gregory Wright's Daredevil issue 337. In 2011, Deathlock had renamed himself The Demolisher, and his computer had long crashed. While fighting for his own survival, he was recruited by Timestream for a deal to be sent back in time and prevent him from becoming Deathlock in the first place. However, they Things got much more complicated when Timestream was revealed to be a secret foreign monarch whom Deathlock had fought years ago, whose malevolent actions threatened all of existence. Next, the Time Variance Authority had to send Godwolf to fight and stop him. Timestream recruited Luther Manning of Earth-616, while Godwolf got his own Deathlocks in the form of Siege and Deathlock Michael Collins of Earth-616. When Manning of Earth-7484 learned about the Timestream's true motives, he stole one of his Time Gauntlets and traveled 
traveled to Earth-616. There, he teamed up with several characters and organizations, like the Tunnel Dweller Society, Tantalus, and Pelops, and even Daredevil. Later, at some point, Luther Manning was recruited by X-51 of Earth-9997 and his team of superhumans from several different realities. His motive was to warn and prepare alternate realities for the arrival of the Celestials, as they would impregnate the worlds and manipulate the DNA of its dominant inhabitants into unwilling antibodies. Each superhuman member had a wish that would be granted for joining the cause, and Luther Manning's only wish was to become a human again. Manning was teamed up with Iron Man 2020 of Earth-8410, Wolverine of Earth-811, Spider-Girl of Earth-1122, Bloodstorm of Earth-1298, and Hyperion of Earth-1121. When the team split into two, Deathlock was with Kilgrave, and together they arrived at Earth-1124, which was ruled by Saturnine. At the end of the long mission, X-51 did try to give Luthor what he wished for. He got hold of the device that Merlin used to restore the life of Captain Britain. He created a new body for Luthor Manning based on his DNA sample, but it was unknown if he succeeded in doing so. Michael Collins After the success of Luther Manning's Deathlock iteration in 1990, creators Dwayne McDuffie, Gregory Wright, and Jackson Guise developed another iteration of the Deathlock character, and this time being the computer programmer Michael Collins. The character was introduced in Deathlock Issue 1, released in May 1990, following which he was there in issues of several different comic series like Dwayne McDuffie's Beyond and Fantastic Four. Belonging to Earth-616, Michael's story began with his working as a computer programmer at Roxxon Oil. It was made to believe that his work on artificial limbs was for the betterment of disabled people, whereas it was actually for the Deathlock project headed by Harlan Riker. After completion, Riker tricked Collins and placed his brains into the new Deathlock cyborg body. Although Collins could watch and feel everything, he had no control over the cyborg body. When the cyborg was tested by Riker, it killed several soldiers as Michael watched in horror. Fortunately, Michael got control of the Deathlock cyborg and his target was Harlan Riker, the man who ruined his life. He found Riker when the latter was making illegal weapon sales to a private army but could not exact his revenge after learning that his diseased body still existed. Some time later, Michael was shown to be trapped in a new battle world with several other superheroes and villains. Michael teamed up with Dr. Pym, Wasp, Spider-Man, Venom, Hood, Gravity, Firebird, Medusa, and Al Craven, and aided them in fighting Dragon Man and the Space Phantom. As the story progressed, Stranger was revealed to be the one behind transporting all the characters to battle world, and they all managed to escape. Once Michael returned, he was in his human form and could no longer become Deathlock. Michael teamed up with the Fantastic Four and piloted their craft during their conflict with Galactus, Stardust, and Silver Surfer. After his return to Earth, not much has been heard about him. Henry Hayes. Created by Nathan Edmondson and Mike Perkins, a new Deathlock was introduced in the original Sin event. The character was considered to be an adaptation of the MCU's portrayal of Deathlock. Hailing from the reality of Earth-616, Henry Hayes was a combat medic in the U.S. Army. During one battle, a suicide bombing attack hit his Humvee in Kandahar or Giresh, and he lost his leg. Biotech, a medical company, took care of him and provided him with a composite fiber prosthesis. Later, under the control of an operator of Biotech named JJ, he became Deathlock. The human cyborg hybrid acted as a soldier, assassin, and operative. During his first mission, he was made to assassinate countless people in populated areas. He had no memories of it later, as after every mission, his memories were erased. During one such mission in Russia, he was almost caught by S.H.I.E.L.D. Gemma Simmons. A new Deathlock was introduced in S.H.I.E.L.D. Volume 3 No. 1 by Mark Wade and Carlos Pacheco. It was Gemma Simmons, the daughter of a high-level executive from Roxxon who worked with Phil Coulson's team in investigating the case of terrorist Abu Musan getting hold of the Uru Sword. She fought alongside Melinda May and helped Heimdall break free from the terrorist group and retrieve his Uru Sword. Later, Simmons was tasked with another mission where a rogue AIM faction had constructed a DNA bomb. While neutralizing it, she was attacked and eventually came in contact with a dangerous material that infected her with a sort of cellular necrosis. She was immediately brought to medical attention, but she was diagnosed with an incurable disease despite all attempts, giving her only a month to live. Meanwhile, when the new Avengers attacked S.H.I.E.L.D., Power Man sensed that Gemma's chi was in a mess. She then contacted Deathlock, Henry Hayes, and when they confronted her, she already slipped into a coma. Mockingbird and Deathlock began to analyze her condition and inferred that the only way to get her back was to transform her into to a death lock. The operation was a success and Gemma survived, but at the cost of being a human cyborg hybrid. When she woke up, she was completely disoriented and began attacking fellow S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. It was Coulson who intercepted her and appealed to her humanity to bring her back to sense. Gemma realized the situation and thanked Deathlock for saving her life.
Marvel's cancelled Deathlock film. When the concept and story of Deathlock began getting attention, there was some serious buzz about making a live-action film on a character. The initiative was taken by Paramount with a former head of Marvel Studios, Stephen Paul and Avi Arad. According to The Guardian, Avi Arad revealed to The Hollywood Reporter that Deathlock's movie would discuss more of cell phone technology as the late 90s and early 2000s was the era of cell phones and computers being in a craze. The film would have highlighted the theme of technophobia, political paranoia, and bleak dystopia, hinting slightly towards how technology could eventually ruin mankind. At first, Randall Frakes was tasked to write the script, but later in 2001, Stu Zickerman and Raven Metzner were assigned as writers, while Lee Tamahori was hired to direct the film. Later in 2004, Stephen Paul and Avi Arad planned to take David Self for screenwriting and Paul McGuigan for directing it. After several rewrites, Marvel was finally compelled to shelf the project and later discard the idea. They had even planned to take Robert Downey Jr., who was thought to be playing Deathlock, which could have changed the entire course of Marvel, especially when Iron Man is still one of the most popular figures in the MCU. Deathlock Powerful Super Soldier Deathlock might not be equal to a Hulk or Thor, but his capabilities were wide range and indeed worth standing out. His cybernetic augmented body provided him not only with an advanced body but also a high-tech mind. Deathlock's unique encephalonic technology allowed him to use his organic brain to store information which could be accessed by the main computer and operation system. The part of his brain that was replaced by an AI system titled The Computer granted him superior levels of intelligence, knowledge, and strategic warfare, along with calculative hand-to-hand -hand combat and prowess over weaponry. This brain could store vast amounts of data and knowledge, making him a genius. Using his tech, Deathlock could manipulate and communicate with any external foreign computer interface, robots, and cyborgs. Deathlock's artificial eyes and ears were also quite advanced and helped him scan and detect variable frequencies. Leaving the tech part, Deathlock possessed superhuman strength, using which he could lift as much as 150 tons. His durability was also at the levels of superhumans, and interestingly, his cyborg structure was made of adamantium, needless to explain further. His muscles and cartilage were composed of an extremely impact-resistant, custom elastic adamantium steel mix that granted him the flexibility of an athlete. Deathlock also possessed superhuman speed and agility despite his massive size and bulk. He could run fast and reach a top speed of 110 miles per hour. His reflexes were extraordinary. To add to his capabilities, his cyborg body could never get tired, thereby granting him superhuman stamina. His fatigue kicked in after 24 hours, following which he, he simply lost his peak conditions. Deathlock also had a unique way of recovering from heavy damages. His cyborg body contained nanites that repaired his techno-organic parts rapidly. Marvelous appearance of Deathlock in other forms of media. Apart from the comics, Deathlock appeared in several other forms of media, mainly in the TV series. It was first in the Black Panther episode to the end, where a team of Deathlocks were sent by the U.S. government to support Wakanda in their struggle against the neighboring country backed by Ulysses Claw. However, they were sent back by Black Panther as the U.S. had their own agenda in mind while supporting them. We're all aware of the Deathlock concept adapted for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Agents of Shield. The idea was incorporated into the character named Mike. Pearson, played by J. August Richards. Introduced in the pilot episode, Mike was an ordinary man who received superhuman strength and other powers owing to a variant of the extremist drug created and injected into him by Project Centipede after he was mortally wounded. Peterson's life was saved, but he was unable to control it, leading to the cause of catastrophic damage around him. It was then that Phil Coulson had managed to avert the danger and stop him. Mike next joined S.H.I.E.L.D. and began working for them. Peace was short-lived as in another mission, Project Centipede injured Mike, captured him, and transformed him into a cyborg assassin. Project Centipede was a division of Hydra and intended to use the company's cybertech to create an army of Deathlocks. Coulson and his team once again saved the day by stopping Hydra from achieving their goals, but Mike wished to stay no longer with S.H.I.E.L.D. and left on a journey of self-discovery and realization. This was the end of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but not for Mike Peterson, as he reappeared in Season 2 to help Coulson from being haunted by an independent faction of S.H.I.E.L.D. He began working for him as his agent and was provided with several technological upgrades. Mike Mike was later captured by Hydra once again and they removed his cybernetic parts, but thanks to S.H.I.E.L.D. who restored his parts and abilities. Mike's final appearance was in the 100th episode of the series titled The Real Deal, where he aided Coulson in closing an interdimensional rift while battling against his pre-Deathlock form, Hive, Lash, and the alien Vrel Nexians. The episode also showcased Mike attending the wedding of Leo Fitz and Gemma Simmons before his final departure. A variation of Deathlock was showcased in Hulk and the Agents of Smash animated series. 
series, voiced by Mark Hildreth, Deathlock was shown to be from the future, where the Skrulls succeeded in invading Earth and he was one of the few human survivors. He was transformed into a cyborg and sent back in time so that he could avert the future. When Deathlock arrived in the past, he was stopped by the agents of Smash while targeting a small innocent girl. However, it was soon revealed that the seemingly normal girl was a super Skrull and all the citizens in the mall were Skrulls preparing for invasion. After Hulk managed to defeat the super Skrull, Deathlock activated the self-destruct button before She-Hulk removed the explosive from his body and used it to destroy the Skrull ship. Deathlock soon joined the agents of Smash and the Avengers and Iron Man built him a new core. Marvelous Verdict So we have finally come to the end of our video and we hope you have liked our content. Feel free to express your thoughts on the character in the comments section. The reason why the character catches similarities with Robocop is because of their origins and motives. Officer Alex James Murphy also shared a similar fate, after which he was made into a human-cyborg hybrid named Robocop. Although he did not go rogue or was not created for malevolent practices, Robocop had his memories preserved and also wanted to get back to his human form desperately. With that, we will be ending today's video. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.